an abrupt shut off, wasn't it? I know, I know. I'm just saying it was abrupt. It's all right. All right. Hey, good morning, First Christian Church. Man, it's good to see you. Glad that we can be together. Glad that we get to worship together. I am super excited about today. Shouldn't we? Well, not just that, but there's other things. Shouldn't we all be excited about every Sunday, though, right? Yes. Oh, it, I'm just excited. All right. Anyway, uh, hopefully when you walked in, if you wanted to grab the pre-made communion, that's back there. That's up here. Hopefully you grabbed one of these bulletins. Um, there's uh, some announcements for us. One that is not in there. Well, there's actually two that's not in there. One, we are having a board meeting immediately after the service. Uh, so uh, if you are a board chair and so forth, please uh, make sure that you stay for that afterwards. Uh, also, the ladies of First Christian Church want to invite you to a bridal shower honoring Ashley Inman. So uh, that's going to be Sunday, April 3rd uh, from 12 until 2, and that's going to be in the fellowship hall. All right, so we'd invite you to come for that. Um, also, we are having choir at five we're having bible study at six and we are actually having food tonight as well so for those of you who like to eat those of you who like the bible it's a perfect combination right so uh you might as well just come tonight for that and then there's more sign up sheets uh there's another sign up sheet for the church directory photos so if you want to it's down there if you haven't been able to make it that's going to be available that uh for us coming up here in another couple weeks All right, that is all the announcements that I have. Uh, You can read the rest of the announcements because sometimes I don't talk about all of them, like the last one. I mean, it's no big deal. It's just, you know, an open house at my house. All right. What? Oh, uh, oh, uh, all announcements for the April lamp ladder need to be in the office by Wednesday. There, you happy? That's all that matters, right? The secretary's happy. All right, so let's go ahead and stand as we have our opening prayer. Father God, we want to thank you, bless you, praise you, keep you, and just honor you, Father. And I'm thank you, uh, thankful for this morning that we have a chance to come together as a family. And uh, it, it's a family because we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. It's a family because as we come together to worship and honor you and to glorify you, we want to lift your name on high. Father, it doesn't matter what's happening in this life. It doesn't matter what's happening in this world. Our purpose is to honor you and to glorify you. And so, Father, when we come together on Sunday mornings, we put the whole world aside. We focus on you. We focus on praising you and glorifying you and honoring you. So, Father, when we know that life is hard sometimes, We know that we go through hardships. We know that we go through amazing mountaintops, and sometimes we go through these valleys. But, Father, when we grow spiritually in you, when we grow spiritually closer to you, we realize that no matter what journey you take us on, you allow us to go through so much so that we can glorify you and honor you no matter what. So, Father, when it seems like it's just raining outside and raining in our hearts, raining in our lives and it just seems like there's just gloom we praise you and we thank you it's in jesus name that we pray amen and i can count a million times people asking me how i can praise you all that I've gone through The question just amazes me Can circumstances possibly Change who I forever am in you
forever sing Holy, holy, holy Holy, holy, holy Is the Lord God Almighty Is the Lord God Almighty Everybody singing Holy, holy, holy Holy, holy, holy Is the Lord God Almighty Good morning. Good morning. You know, as I travel around going to auctions, I always take the back roads because one of my pet peeves is seeing the signs on the church bulletin, on the church signs. I like to read them and see what they've got to say. Some are too long. You're going too fast. You can't read but the first line. But a lot of them are short and to the point. My best one is this. Under the same management for over 2,000 years. Now that's good. And you know, a good part about that one is we know the management. We're close friends because he's our Savior, isn't he? Now, this week when I was traveling, I saw another one. It brings a little bit of thought. It said this All people die, not all live. Praise God. It's the reason we come, excuse me, at this time to remember. Because we have the right to live. We know the Father as our Creator. And we know that He sent His Son, Jesus, to be our Savior. He went to that cross to give us the right to be with Him. Keep that in mind as we remember this week. I thought about the song too this week. That little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. You know, we remember so that our light keeps shining. Jesus said... Lest ye forget, do this in remembrance of me. So that's what we do to keep our light shining. As you remember him this week, give him praise and glory. Let us pray. Father, we're thankful to know you as our personal Savior. We're thankful for the grace that you gave as you went to the cross. We give you all honor and glory at this time of our worship. In your name we pray. Amen. The hymns of are here. Come as God leads you.
know, living in Mississippi where we're on central time, we're behind people on the east coast. So if they have 11 o'clock services, they've already had church this morning, right? So you know what? Somewhere east of us, somewhere at those churches that have 10 o'clock services instead of 11 o'clock here at home, somebody got saved today. Isn't that amazing to think that somebody gets saved here and then you come over to our time zone and somebody gets saved and you go to the next one and somebody gets saved. And then, so it seems like church just kind of washes and Jesus washes all over the country. Somewhere today, there was a new name written down in glory. We hope and pray that if you need to make that decision and rededicate your life, that you'll do it today. There's no need of waiting. Because we need those new names written down in glory. I was once a sinner, but I came pardoned to receive from my Lord. This was freely given, and I found that He always kept His word there's a new name written down in glory and it's mine oh yes it's mine and the white robe angels in the story a sinner has come home there's a new name written down in glory and it's mine oh yes it's mine with my sins forgiven, I am bound for heaven, never more to roam. I was humbly kneeling at the cross, fearing not but God's angry frown. When the heavens opened and I saw that my name was written down, there's a new name written down in glory. And it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. And the white robe angels sing the story. A sinner has come home. There's a new name written down in glory. And it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. With my sins forgiven, I am bound for heaven, never more to roam. In the book is written, saved by grace, oh the joy that came to my soul. Now I am forgiven, and I know, by the blood I am made whole. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine, oh yes it's mine. And the white robe angels sing the story. A sinner has come home, there's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine, oh yes it's mine, with my sins forgiven I am bound for heaven, never more to roam. All the way my Savior leads me was written in 1875. Actually, the words were written, the, the music was written by Dr. Robert Lowry a few years earlier. A lady named Fanny Crosby penned the words to this song. Now, you may not have heard of Fanny Crosby, but Fanny Crosby was a missionary, prolific songwriter. In her lifetime, she wrote over 8,000 songs. She wrote songs that you grew up listening to, that we sing here. She wrote, Redeemed, Draw Me Nearer, Blessed Assurance, Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross. And she wrote the old rugged cross. There are 15 hymns in that green hymnal that this lady wrote. What a lot of people don't know about Fanny Crosby is that at six months old, she became blind. And she was blind her whole life. But yet, she had the focus to keep God in her life and spread his word for 
generations to come. That's, uh, what, 146 years ago that this song was written. And we're still singing it today. And the words of the song still touch people's heart because it talks about mercy and comfort and grace and God's love and the eventual rest that we'll all share when we die and we go to be with Jesus. All the way my Savior leads me. All the way my Savior leads me, what have I to ask beside? Can I doubt His tender mercy, who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divinest comfort, here in faith in Him to dwell. For I know whatever befall me, Jesus do with all things well. For I know whatever befall me, Jesus do with all things well. All the way my Savior leads me, choose each winding path I tread. Gives me grace for every trial, feeds me with the living bread. Though my weary steps may falter, and a soul a thirst may be, gushing from a rock before me, lo, a spring of joy I see. Gushing from a rock before me, lo, a spring of joy I see. All the way my Savior leads me, oh, the fullness of His love, perfect rest to me is promised in my Father's house above. When my spirit clothed in mortal wings its flight to realms of day, this my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. This my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way.
So Friday, um, Heather had an appointment in the morning, and then uh, I went shopping, and I came home, and she was doing other things, going up and down the stairs, and I said to her, I said, how many times have you gone up and down the stairs today? And she said, two or three times. I said, okay, do me a favor. Don't go up and down the stairs anymore. If you need something upstairs or if you need something done upstairs, just tell me. Just let me know, and I would be happy to do it. And she said, okay. Hours later, I come back home, and I said, I, and she was coming down. I said, how many times have you gone up and down the stairs uh, since this morning? And she goes, oh, just a couple of times. And I said, I told you not to go up and down the stairs. I will do it for you. I didn't say anything after this. This is the rest of the conversation that happened. I know you told me not to go up and down the stairs. I know that you want to help me, but I feel useless because I need to go up and down the stairs because I have to do all those things. And you don't tell me what to do. I know that you told me what to do, but you don't tell me what to do, but I'm going to go up and down those stairs, and, and I know that you're going to say, well, I don't want you to hurt anymore, but you're going to just tell me this, and then I'm just going to go up and down the stairs because I, I'm going to want to do all the things that I'm going to do, and, and you don't tell me what to do. Okay, I don't tell her what to do. That's all I got out of that. But up and down the stairs she went. All right. Um, today is Revelation. If you've read the book of Revelation, I found a theme that runs through it to help us go through it. And the theme is this. You see that up there? He is worthy. I want you verbally to say that with me on the count of three. I'll go one, two, three, and we all say that. You got it? One, two, three. He is worthy. Remember that because you're going to be saying that a lot throughout this sermon. All right? Because he is worthy. When we go through, oh, and... You're going to be saying, what chapter? What chapter? All of them. All right. I have... <laughs> Samantha came in. I, I was in my office on Monday, and I was reading, and I had my glasses on, and I had my little pad of paper right next to it, and I'm writing, and I'm writing. And she walks in, and she goes, what are you doing? She goes, you're writing down things for Sunday? And I'm like, yes. She goes, okay, but i got to tell you things. I said, go ahead and tell me. I'll go right back to this. Look. There's things written down on this, all right? We are going to be jumping around through all of this. You're, you just, no, I need it, though. No, no, it's okay. All right, she's, okay, she'll give it back. But anyway, he, here's the thing. We have been taught our whole lives pretty much to not go through the book of Revelation. Why? Because it's scary. It's too it's too mysterious for us. It's it's uh, uh it's too challenging. It's 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 uh, it's too challenging, right? Hard for us to understand. Hard for us to understand that. Why would or who would try to scare you from reading the book of Revelation? There's only one. <laughs> There's only one, and you're right. Satan would. Satan wants to scare you into thinking that you can't understand the book of Revelation. And he doesn't want you to read it. Why does he not want you to read it? Ready? One, two, three. He is worthy. That's the reason why. He doesn't want you to know that he is worthy. All right. All right. There we go. All right. Revelation chapter 4. All right? I'm going to be reading a lot this morning. All right? And while I'm reading, I want you to follow. Revelation chapter 4. Starting in verse 1. Ooh. Okay, I got time. Chapter 4, starting in verse 1. And after this, I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I first heard speak to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, 
and I will show you what is to take place after this. At once I was in the spirit, and there before me was a throne in heaven and someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of jasper and ruby, a rainbow that shone like an emerald and circled the throne. Circling the thro- uh, surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones, and seated on them were the 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings and peals of thunder. In front of the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These were the seven spirits of God. Also in front of the throne was that that looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the center around the throne were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes. In front and in the back, the first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox, and the third had the face of a man. The fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and were covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. Day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is, uh, who was and is to come. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the four living creatures gave glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fell down before him who sits on the throne and worshiped him uh, in the lives forever and ever. They laid their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, O Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you create all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Go back up to 8. Say this with me. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Say it again. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Every single time that I pray, I say that. And I have to keep saying that over and over and over again. And there's one of the reasons why I do it, not only is to acknowledge what he is and who he is and how he is and what he's done for all of us. It's because I have to keep saying that over and over and over again until I stop thinking about the other things that are happening around me. Where I stop thinking about what's happening at work. Where I stop thinking about what's happening in my family where I stop thinking about what's going on with with the outside world. And so when I'm sitting and I'm praying, I say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. I say it over and over and over again until I finally feel my spirit go, okay, we can begin. And I start to pray. For you alone are worthy to receive all praise, glory, power, and honor. For by your will, all things were created and they have their being. Do you know where I get that from? That next part that we just read. I say it over and over and over again to get myself into that place. Then he goes on and he says this. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and the seal with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb, looking as if it had been slain, standing at the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. The lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, 
which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals because you were slain. And with your blood, you purchased for God persons of every tribe and language and people and nation. You made them to be a kingdom, a priest to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard the voices of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and uh, ten thousands, uh, ten thousands, they encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice, they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and glory and honor and praise. Then I heard every creature in earth and on the earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that were in the sea saying to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. Why? Because he is worthy. Ready? One, two, three. He is worthy. Chapter 7. Starting in verse 9. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and, the, and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down to, uh, on their faces before the throne and worshiped God saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength to be our God forever and ever. Amen. Why? One, two, three. He is worthy. Do you see why Satan doesn't want you to worship and read this book so far? We are getting a glimpse of heaven. We're getting a glimpse of what it means for People who, and, and creatures, and, and elders, and, and all these, those great multitudes of people that no one could count that are going to be worshiping the Lamb and worshiping God. He doesn't want you to have that, embrace that, to, to experience that even here on earth so that we can doubt and we can question and, and so forth. We need to be able to understand that everything that we read in the book of Revelation is pointing to the Lamb and what He has done. So we never forget it. Because when we start to forget what he has done or question what he has done, we forget and understand that he is worthy. And everything starts to unravel when we start to question that. And he goes on. Chapter 11. Starting in verse 15. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there was loud voices in heaven which said, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. For he is worthy. And the 24 elders who were seated on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshiped God, saying, We give thanks to you, O Lord Almighty, the one who is and who was, because you have taken your great power and you have begun to reign. The nations were angry 
And your wrath has come, the time has come for judging the dead and for rewarding your servants, the prophets, and your people who revere your name, both great and small, and for destroying those who destroy the earth. Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and within his temple was seen the Ark of the Covenant. And there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, an earthquake, and severe hailstorms. Go to chapter 12. Starting in verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, now we have come now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. Of who? The Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They do not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and to the sea, uh, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury because he knows that his time is short. His time is short. Because his time is short. Because he knows his time is short. He is going to do everything in his power to get you off track. He's going to say things. He's going to do things. He's going to make you question. He's going to make you doubt to get you off track because his time is short. If you stay on track, if you keep going down the path that you know that you're supposed to and recognizing that he is worthy, you will read even in the book of Revelation that we're in now and you will rejoice and you will look at all of these things and you will say he is worthy. This is the theme that runs through the entire book. But he wants to confuse you. He wants to tell you you can't understand the book of Revelation. You can't understand what's in this book. Too much for you. But it's not. He is worthy. Who? The Lamb. Who? The Lamb that was slain. Who? Our Savior. Who? (laughs) We're going to find out. Go to 19. Look at verse 6. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters and like loud peals of thunder shouting, Hallelujah! For our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give Him glory for the wedding of the Lamb has come and His bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, white and clean, uh, has been given to her to wear. The fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's holy people. Then the angel said to me, write this. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. Then he added, these are the true words of God. Go to verse 11. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice, he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The 
armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword that which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh is his name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. He is worthy. Chapter 20. Eleven. Chapter 20, starting in verse 11. Then I saw a great white throne and him seated on it. The earth and the heavens fled from his presence and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. You have a book about you in heaven. Everything that you say, everything that you do, everything that you didn't do, and everything that you do do. Right? Everything. And your book will be opened. That should scare us. Because you think you can get away with things. You think you can not do what he wants. And he looks at you going, huh, I'm writing this down. Verse 13. The sea gave up their dead and that were in it. Death and Hades gave up their dead that were in them. And each person was judged according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. Anyone whose name was not found in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Why? Because he is worthy. Because he is worthy. It's worthy of what? To rule? To sit on his throne? He is worthy to be the lamb that was slain, uh, the lamb that was slain. He is worthy of every piece of glory that we can give him. See, there's, when he was leaving, after his, when he came, he lived and he died for us. And he gave us a job. He gave us a responsibility. And that's what we're supposed to do. I'm not done yet. <laughs> Samantha, she came in and my office when she said, man, do you know this song? And I started listening to it, and I started watching it and reading the words. And she's like, I'd like to do this one day. I said, I know where we can put it. She goes, oh, during your sermon? Yeah. Let's do it. Watch and listen to the words of the song called The Commission. It's okay if the 
it's hard to believe I have faith that you will do greater things It's my time to go But before I leave Then the angel showed me the river of water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing down from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of uh, fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and the Lamb will be the city, and His servants will serve Him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. There will not be any need for a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. Then the angel said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God who inspires the prophets and his angels uh, to show his servant the things that must take place. Look. I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of this prophecy written in this scroll. He's coming when? Soon. I, John, am the one who heard all and saw these things. And when I heard them and seen them, I fell down to, to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me. But he said, don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your fellow prophets and, and with all who keep the words of the scroll. Worship God. And then he told me, do not seal up the words of this prophecy with this scroll because the time is near. Do not seal them up. Share them. 
You can read them. You can hear them. You can understand them. Don't seal them up. And Satan hears these words and he says to us, you can't understand this. You won't understand this. He wants to seal them up. Not God. Not Jesus. Not the Holy Spirit. Satan does. Doesn't want you to read these words. Verse 11. Let the one who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let the vile person continue to be vile. Let the one who does right continue to do right. And let the holy person continue to be holy. Why? Because he is worthy. Verse 12. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give it to every person according to what they had done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they might have the right to the tree of life and to go through the gates into the city. Outside are the dogs. Those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come. Let the one who hears say, come. Let the the one who is thirsty, come. And let the one who wishes to take the free gift of the water of life. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this scroll, the book of Revelation, if anyone adds anything to them, I will add to that person the plagues described in this scroll. Did, did you read the plagues? Did you read the plagues? You don't want those plagues. Because I'm going to add to them anybody who does anything to this. And if anyone takes the words away from the scroll of prophecy, God will take away from that person any share in the tree of life and in the holy city which are described in the scroll. He who testifies to these things says... Yes, I am coming soon. You see what John says at the very end here? Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Right? Amen. You, you want to come and take your bride home? Come. You, you want to make sure that, that you want to take everybody up to heaven that it deserves to go up to heaven, everyone whose name is found written in the book of life? Come! And Jesus says, I am coming soon. Never forget that part. He could be coming at any moment. And people have been saying, yeah, but it's been over 2,000 years. Yeah, but 2,000 years compared to eternity is Nothing. Jesus says, I am coming soon. And John says, please come. Please come soon. Verse 21. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. And everyone said, amen. Why? Say it with me one more time. One, two, three. He is worthy. Never forget that. Our song of invitation that we have is, I will serve thee. If there is something that you need to talk about, something that you need to pray about, that's what we're here for. And I'm asking that you examine yourself seriously. See things that you need to change or need to do differently to honor Him and to glorify Him so that you can serve Him. Let's stand as we sing this song, I Will Serve Thee. I 
I will serve Thee because I love Thee. You have given life to me. I was nothing before You found me. You have given life to me. Heartaches, broken pieces, ruined lives are why You died on Calvary. Your touch was what I longed for. You have given life to me. Father God, we just want to thank you and praise you. And Father, I thank you for the journey that we've been on for the last year and three and a half months of going through this amazing book that you've given us, this Going from Genesis to Revelation, many people can't even say that they've even done that or even attempt. But Father, you have guided us and protected us and helped us, and we have finished this book. And I pray, Father, that we just go on our own, Genesis to Revelation, Genesis to Revelation, and take it all in and learn and grow what it is that your scripture has to say for us. But Father, we do know, we do know that Jesus is coming back, and he's coming back soon, and he's going to take his bride home because he said so and why because he is worthy to do so father i'm asking that you please open up our eyes and our ears spiritually so that we need to see and hear the things that we need to do to glorify your name and to glorify your son thank you jesus for being the one who was found worthy to open the scrolls Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. It's in your name that we pray. Amen.